a couple of issues. They're trying to see my kids and their mother's not letting me. I figure, you know what I'm saying, since they won't let me be a father, since I can't be a parent, then I'll go ahead and be a musician, you know what I'm saying? Since I, that, that part of my life has kind of been kind of trucked, I kind of just decided, you know what I'm saying, that I'm gonna go ahead and go all out with this because if, if I get successful enough with this music, I'll be able to do something about the situation. And people will actually care. Never give up. Gonna do what I have to. I can tell you never seen this side. In your eyes, I'm seeing butterflies. I want to be able, obviously, work out, look out for my community, you know, the people that need it, the people that that I, I kind of like lived around, whether when I was growing up or when I've been since I've been an adult, and be kind of an advocate for. I'm just like I said, just for every, like everybody for social change, and uh, and make sure my mom is is able to brag about me, and, and everybody is able to brag about me. You know what I'm saying? That they, you know, it's taking some, it's taking long enough. I made enough fuck ups, or mess, I messed up enough. So I kind of want to make, you know, do something right this time. So all in. In your eyes, I'm seeing butterflies. I can tell you never been alive So follow me into another life A whole new world Where magical things can happen Flying carpets, blue-eyed red dragons A whole new world You'll never wanna come back down Follow me, I'll show you around Show you around, show you around. What scares me the most? I don't know, I guess I can't think of it. Uh, besides like losing and, and being like a complete failure or like not accomplishing what I what I feel like I need to accomplish because of my own bad decisions. Out of, you know, I feel like I'm running out of time you know, every day, so, and I mean, people are growing older. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, people, people are leaving <laughs> for good. And uh, I just want to make sure I, I get there before it's too late, you know what I'm saying? So. I guess that's what gives me that drive every day to wake up every morning is because I want to make it. I don't want it like to wait too long or for it to be late, too late before I, I do what I need to do so that I can fix this, you know what I'm saying? What the situation I want to fix. Yeah, it is. So I, I just want to perform my function correctly and to the best of my ability. But I, I want to also, like I said, I want to be late because for all the times that I've messed up, and made my mom look crazy, my dad look crazy, you know, my grandma look crazy, all them. I want to be able to kind of know that, you know what I'm saying, fix all that with success. So, you know, I mean, and I feel like there's, I feel like I have something to prove, and I know I do. I mean, I, I can't, I don't know if I can go in depth in it, but, I got to I got to do
He crosses the road, leaving a corroded trail. A trapdoor leads to where lost souls burn slow and no one hears them well. But enough cooking will leave anyone fried. What to do when the pot's warming and it's only you inside? Dice to pieces and chews to bits. He returns to the world as a whole nother dish. A shadow of himself, a reflection no more. A long shot from the days that he used to do chores. He traded comfort for action, love for passion, and now he lives every day like it's his last one. The Road to Palawan. I got into my, my car accident. I was driving. It was late, it was like 12 midnight, and I was going to go see this girl that I was like, you know, that I was romantically involved with, you know, selling drugs out of my car at the time, because I had like, I had moved to LA, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know nobody and shit, so I was living out of my car. So I was I was hustling out of it too, so I was selling Chris and, uh, and pills and shit, and uh, Zanny, you know what I'm saying, pretty much. So. But I was just small time and I wasn't making big money, just enough to get by. But uh, I had just, I'd made like just diff various flips along the way. So I was tired, you know what I'm saying? Cause I'd been grinding all day. So I took a line of Chris to try to wake up and I popped half of a pill of Xanax. Thinking, cause I didn't know what Xanax was. I never tried it, you know what I'm saying? I was just selling it, you know what I'm saying? So I thought it was an upper. But next thing I know, I'm in the hospital and it's like three weeks later, and uh, I wake up with tubes in my throat and fucking, you know, shit in, all these needles in my vein. And uh, I didn't know that half my face was gone, you know what I'm saying? So I kept going in and out. And then my mom came and she was like, are you guys gonna be able to fix his nose? And I was like, what do you mean fix my nose? What is it, broken? She was like, no, it's gone. It was just, it was a huge nightmare, man. I never, I didn't think I could do, I could ever go through that. I never thought it would happen. Yeah, uh, the first time that I had my uh, homeless experience, the first time I slept on the streets was uh, after I broke up with this girl that I was with in Nevada. I was in Vegas with her. We had moved out there together. We ended up getting into a bad argument. I ended up leaving and I went to Arizona thinking that I was gonna see, I was gonna make it to a, a relative's house. But when I got to the relative's house, I hadn't been communicating with them in a while. So when I got to their house, they wasn't there no more and somebody else had moved in. So I had nowhere to go and uh, nobody's number. The first night, I was I was just walking around trying to figure out in my head what I was gonna do because I only had like thirty five dollars on me at that at that point. So, and I had that I think I had like a sheet, <laughs> and uh, so I was like, man, fuck it. I, I got to this train station this, in, in Phoenix. It's like the outside of a train station, a rail line, and so I slept there. And I remember waking up like at three in the morning, and there was like a family of raccoons that was just walking by me like hella close. And I was like, oh shit. And then it started raining and I didn't know where to go. And I was just getting rained on. So I went to this park. I found my way, made my way to this park somehow. I think it was like 29th street by, uh, I forgot. It's by some, it's by this mall in, 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 in Phoenix. And uh, I think that, I think you would consider that the, uh, the west side or something. But I, I got to this park and it was just filled with meth heads, you know what I'm saying? So when I laid down and woke up, it was a bunch of syringes and motherfuckers just shooting up and smoking. But they were the only people around me and they were the first homeless people that I met. So I'm, I'm getting information from them like, man, how do I eat? Is there anything where to eat? They, like, they don't have no information, but they, they did give me like a blanket and 
Like, I, I was able to crash there. So I hadn't eaten in a couple of days at this point. I had ran, ran through my, because uh, I ran through my $35. I think I spent it on beer or whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I left the park one day and hopped on the bus and I ran to some other homeless people who said that there's a place down the way that served, that, that I can get free food. So I found out where to get the free food from and everything. After I found out where to get the free food, <laughs> I'm talking all along. That's when I was like, at least I knew I could eat every day. It was a lot easier. I ended up finding this little job where I was putting flyers on everybody's door, uh, making $35, $35 uh, for eight hours. If I passed out all the flyers, if I didn't pass out all the flyers, which happened about 25% of the time, I only got about $21 for eight hours of working. So, you know, and it was hard work, you know, just walking door to door for eight hours straight, neighborhood to neighborhood, blocks to blocks to blocks. And, uh, and it was really hard work, you know, slave, really slave labor, but it was the only gig I, I had to find at the time. So I saved up my money and moved to Dallas, Texas from there. From Dallas, Texas, um, I did the same gig in Dallas, Texas, but they were paying me more. They were giving me 40 bucks for six hours. So it was a little bit more fair. And with that, I still didn't like the job. So I was, I, I started saving up my money and bought an instrument. And that's when I bought the clarinet. And that's when the story begins. <laughs> I try to focus more on the clarinet because I feel like for me there's a lot there's a little bit more that can be said through the sounds because it's a different language you know what I'm saying there's like the English language the Spanish language the Arabic you know all these different languages and then there's a language of music you know what I'm saying and, and sound so I try to use that language the music language of sound you know what I'm saying because it's it's more descriptive I believe you know what I'm saying of emotions especially. The sound of the clarinet to me though, it's it's a voice. Like it feels I feel like it's my like it's it's it, it has a human sound to it to me, you know, in some way in, in many ways. I like that I can go up to the high notes and the low notes and and play with different emotions on the clarinet. It, it gives me that flexibility because it has so many different octaves that you can play with. Like sometimes I hear people talk about homeless people and they try to generalize all homeless people and you know like they're all like everybody's crazy like I'm, I live outside too right now you know what I'm saying but that's not like this is not like my life goal you know what I'm saying it's not to be outside it just happens I, I never had to deal with it before in my life until so now that I'm actually experiencing it I have different opinions <laughs> you know what I'm saying opinions that are more reality based so I feel like people should hold with the opinions and, and, and that way they'll learn more. We all learn more when, we, when, we, when we're open to new ideas and new, new, new versions and forms of reality, you know what I'm saying? Then your reality becomes bigger and the wind doesn't blow you away as easy. <laughs> and if, if other people can do it, then I can do it. All by playing a horn, you know what I'm saying? Charlie Parker could do it, John Coltrane could do it, I could do it, you know what I'm saying? If Jizzy Gillespie could do it, I could do it, you know what I'm saying? If Miles Davis can, I can, you know what I'm saying? If anybody can, I can, so it is what it is.